Now, the next topic is drain characteristic of JFET. So, how does a drain characteristic looks like and what are its parameters? The first thing is you have two axes. So, in X axis, we normally note or we normally write the voltage. And in Y axis, so we write the current which is ID. We vary the voltage VDS and we plot the values of current ID. We plot the values of current ID. Now, as I increase the value of VDS while keeping VGS is equal to 0, so the current varies linearly initially. So, at initial stages, it varies linearly and then it has a constant current value and then it suddenly starts increasing. So, it suddenly starts increasing to an abrupt value, like it's a to a larger value. The current goes very high. So, this is called breakdown region. This value or this current is called breakdown current and this is a breakdown region. Normally, we do not operate the device in breakdown region. So, coming to the very first region where the current varies linearly with the voltage, this region is called ohmic region. It is called ohmic region because the resistance, whatever the resistance you get here, so it makes the current and voltage proportional to each other. So, after certain point, that is after the certain voltage, so the current remains constant. This voltage point is called pinch off. This voltage point is called pinch off. So, after this pinch off voltage, the current remains constant. It will not vary. It, you, you will be having a constant current. So, this region is called active region or it can also be called as saturation region. It can also be called as saturation region, active region or because it appears after the pinch off, it is also called as pinch off region. And this region will be the breakdown region. Okay, now coming to the se second drain characteristic or the drain characteristic when I vary the VGS values, I will be varying the VGS values in three different variations. That is, once I will take VGS less than 0, VGS greater than 0 and VGS equal to 0. Here, I will take VDS as positive voltage. In the previous diagram, I showed you VDS taken as negative voltage. Here, I am taking it as positive voltage. That is, I want the channel to conduct. When I want the channel to conduct, I will take VDS as positive voltage. Now, I have different voltage levels. See, I have already drawn the characteristic. I will tell you, like I am taking three different levels or more than three different levels. The first thing is, when I take VGS is equal to 0 volts, the characteristic follows the same thing. You will be having active region, saturation region and breakdown region. So, you have active, saturation and you have a breakdown region. Second, if I still reduce the VGS value, the second case, when VGS is negative. So, VGS is negative, again you have ohmic region, active region, breakdown region. Again, if I still reduce, you will be having ohmic region, active region, breakdown region. When I increase the voltage, that is VGS greater than 0. When I take VGS greater than 0, I will be having ohmic region, active region and you will be having breakdown region. So, if you see properly, the breakdown voltage decreases. It is decreasing once you decrease VGS. It increases once you increase VGS. Here, VGS is positive, say plus 1 volt. So, like this, the drain characteristic of JFET varies. This is the explanation of drain characteristic of JFET. The last region here is cutoff region, this region. So, this is the region where VGS is equal to 0 and also ID equal to 0. That is when I do not apply any sort of VDS. When VDS is equal to 0, you just apply VGS and I, VGS as 0 and the current will be 0. So, this region is called cutoff region. So, very important thing, it is the cutoff region what you get for a JFET. The next top topic is transfer characteristic of N-channel JFET. How does it transfer characteristic of N-channel JFET looks like and what are all its parameters? Now, first let us understand again. So, here we are plotting the current. We are taking the current. So, this is a current axis. 
ID which is plotted against VGS. So in the previous drain characteristic we have plotted current with respect to VDS. So here we are plotting with respect to VGS. VGS I am taking here is negative VGS minus VGS and the current is on the positive x axis. Now this is a characteristic what do we get and let us analyze what are all the different parameters we have. The current remains as 0. The current remains 0 when VGS is VGS off. That is the point from where the current remains to be 0 is VGS off. Okay. So the next is slowly as I increase the value of VGS. So it is let me assume that it is minus 5 volts. So let I increase it. Increasing minus 5 is making it minus 4. So as I increase it, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, up to 0. So as I increase it, the current will start increasing. So and it reaches the maximum value when or it reaches a maximum value when the VGS value is equal to 0. Now when I started increasing, so once you increase the value of VGS 0.5 times of VGS off. So if it is minus 5, if I increase it to 0.5 times of VGS off, that is 1 by 2 of minus 5 is minus 2.5, somewhere at 2.5, if this is minus 2.5. So at that point, you will get a current which is equal to IDSS that is whatever the complete current I get IDSS. This is reverse saturation current. So divided by 4 I will be getting. If you still increase the value of VGS. So if I keep on increasing. So at a point where VGS is equal to 0.3 times of VGS of. So this is minus 5. So 0.3 into minus 5. 5. So which is minus 1.5 volts. Minus 1.5 volts. So let me mark this point. So this will be minus 1.5 volts. At this point your current will be equal to. So IDS is divided by 2. Half the current you will be getting here. And as you increase the VGS to 0. When you reach the VGS value equal to 0. The current reaches the saturation. Sorry. Uh, IDSS point. So this is what transfer characteristic explains. Now the current equation ID is given as IDSS into 1 minus VGS divided by VGS of whole square. This equation so you don't have to derive this equation for your syllabus you just need to remember this and it is called square law expression or it is also called as Cotley equation. It is called as square law expression or it is also called as Scottly equation.